want to talk about this topic of indentured servitude, if you will, or if not, it's, it's really slavery in uh, where many West African or Ethiopian or Filipino or other Asian or even um, in Asia and India, it's all to, together, but people from India as well as other parts of Asia end up in these um, Arab places, uh, believing they're going to get some sort of compensation for working there, it's going to be greener pastures. But when they arrive, they have to end up giving up their passport. That's the part where things get a little tricky. And there was a young lady from Sierra Leone who decided that she wanted to go work in Kuwait because she was struggling in Sierra Leone. Uh, she was able to get a flight, got to Sierra Leone, I'm sorry, got to Kuwait, and uh, found out that the life there was not what it appeared to be. Now, I don't know all the ins and outs of what the majority of everybody's stories are. I know her story, and I know the stories that I've heard uh, from other people. But in essence, what happens is when you arrive, you have to give up your passport. That is, first, that's red flag number one. That if you go somewhere and you have to give it up, that means at that point you can't leave. Now, on a deeper level, what it also tells you is <laughs> who owns you? <laughs> because these passports are basically saying you can't go here or, or they won't allow this particular person into the country without certain things. I noticed that when, in being a dual citizen, um, I love the mic, but it's just like right here in my neck, you know? <laughs> uh, in being a dual citizen, I find that if I want to use my West African passport, I have to jump through certain hoops that I don't have to jump through if I use my U.S. passport. And that's even with other African countries. So that tells you that there's some, some something in the punch bowl that isn't uh, right. And the fact that they can just revoke your passport whenever they feel like they can just say, we can take this back, kind of tells you who owns you. And if uh, there's certain countries, if you try to get dual citizenship, then you have to forfeit your citizenship to the country so just who owns you it, it just gets a little bit deeper but, but back to the point about the uh, what happens in some of these Arab countries I know in her particular story she sent me pictures of abuse that she had endured at the hands of the family that she was staying in I saw bruises uh, she appeared to be in the hospital she had definitely lost a lot of weight there were some problems happening uh, based on the pictures of what I saw you know so that's all I could go with and um she was sending videos of what was going on in that particular house that she was in that uh, that I saw. Now, there was some question mark about some uh, other videos that were sent, but as far as where I could hear her voice and see what she was doing, um, that I got those pictures and videos. The um, But uh, I've been hearing this so much, and it just speaks to the bubbles that we live in because a lot of us are living in bubbles we think that especially in the western world we don't understand what's happening outside of the western world and some of the situations people are finding themselves in because of the sheer number of people the population is so large in some of these places you know ethiopia has like 150 million people so it's second most populous country in africa behind nigeria uh you have um, you know, other countries that just have tremendous populations. A lot of uh, Asian countries have tremendous pop population size. And people are just trying to find enough to be able to survive. And then that opens the door to exploitation. So I believe the more we talk about what's happening in some of these Arab countries, it, one, it'll help deter someone from going there, but then it also helps us to understand, okay, this is what could be happening in Kuwait, what could be happening in Saudi Arabia, what could be happening in Oman, what could be happening in uh, the UAE. Uh, and, and, and a lot of us take our money to these places. And, uh, and, and so because of that, it might be something to consider. To say, hey, you know, this is what's going on. This is how y'all treating folks. Well, maybe we'll take our money someplace else. The, the, the one thing that makes the world go round is the money. 
And if you don't take your money certain places, believe me, people start to listen and pay attention to you. If there's no resources, then they say, hey, what do we need to do to change our image? What do we need to do to you know, do all of these different things to get to make where we are more attractive? Uh, and, and, and so that's just a thought. I mean, I'm just putting it out here. I, I think if you uh, research domestic slaves in Arab countries or domestic workers in Arab countries, you might find uh, some very interesting interesting details. The way that the young lady got out of the situation in Kuwait, I was able to help her locate the embassy and she would have to communicate through Twitter. So she was able to get out of there and um, I went through a lot though. She went through a lot and finally made her way back to Sierra Leone. So hopefully she won't um, you know, go back down that road again. But I found that that particular uh, story was very interesting and um, just to kind of show what's going on out here in the world and um, yeah 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 so I just wanted you know drop that out there and, and maybe uh, maybe you all have some thoughts on it and uh, I, I think I haven't been to I mean I don't know what's happening here in Egypt so much I'll have to do I'll do a little bit of research to see if that's what's going on here uh, all Arab countries are not the same so that's the one thing about it. Tourism is big in Egypt, so they might be a bit more mindful of those behaviors. I don't know. I'll research a little more. If you got some information, drop it in the comments. Let me know what's happening in Egypt and if they have that same thing. Don't don't just say it, you know, because a lot of times I'm gonna tell you that I'm gonna tell you the social media space. I I've seen so much misinformation in the comments that it would just rock your world they're just the stuff so if you have if you have an assessment just put a link in there to back up your source so that it's not yeah that's what they doing over there okay well you got some pictures you got some proof you know let's put some let's put something down so that we can um or point us to a reference point you know that that's why like i say to people hey go you know pull up domestic slaves in arab countries youtube it check it out see what up see what information is out there uh, versus just you know just putting information out in the atmosphere that might not be true uh, because I know how people are you put something out there now they were running with it I heard on YouTube I heard on Google so let's uh, see what we can do as far as putting credible sources out there so that people can go and research it and then um, then I'll follow this up as a matter of fact I think it's going to be one of those so uh, they will follow this up a little bit I don't plan on going to a whole lot of Arab countries anyway so uh, let's see what we can do because uh, my heart is definitely on the continent of Africa and if it's happening with us uh, Ethiopian sisters or my West African sisters then and we know about this whole thing well no a lot of people don't know about this whole Libyan slave trade deal uh, it's a lot going on let me just say this slavery is far from over and it's happening on multiple levels and it's happening in America yes it is happening in America Human, something called human trafficking that people seem to be blind to because we're in a bubble of delusion in America. Um, but then it's also happening on the continent of Africa. You can go to um, Lake Volta in Ghana. Uh, you can go to places in Benin and Nigeria, uh, northern Nigeria, um, Niger, Chad, uh, all over. And, and fine. I mean, just just you know, just start researching slavery around the world. China, Indonesia. I mean, you can go all over the world and find some sort of hostage taking, kidnapping, uh, if you will, and people being put to work. And it, and that's just been the way of the world for ages. And what makes it you know, stop now? I mean, it's that's just the way that it is. So research it. And uh, I would love to see what your commentary is, what your thoughts are below. Uh, we always like for intelligent commentary. And um, because we're trying to bridge the gap, even from an educational perspective. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. All right.
Adventures of Darren and Destiny. And Darren and Destiny are twin brother and sister. And you go on their adventures throughout the African diaspora, meaning so African diaspora destinations, primarily focused in Africa, but we go to South America, we're gonna to go to the Caribbean. Their first book is going to take you to Ghana. And then we're gonna go on a safari. And from there, we're gonna to go to Ethiopia. And then we go to Salvador, Brazil. And what the goal is, is to be able to inspire curiosity in the continent of Africa, in our children from a very young age, and to really tell a more accurate story. Most of our children are exposed to negative images, late night infomercials about how bad things are, everybody's sick, everybody's poor, everyone's uneducated, but that's simply not true. So what Darren and Destiny and their family do is they go to different African destinations. They are learning about these different places. You're beginning to see positive images, but still telling the truth. I mean, that's the important thing, to tell the truth about some of the things that have occurred. But it's all done on a children's level so they begin to understand it. And it begins to pique their curiosity. They begin to learn more. And hopefully one day they will want to explore and visit the continent of Africa and its many countries. There's just so much that Darren and Destiny are able to do and as they're doing it it's, it's like they begin to open the minds of a, a new generation and they don't get bombarded and indoctrinated with negativity they're actually able to see positivity and inspiring images and messages about the African diaspora as well as those who are still indigenous to the continent of Africa and they begin to learn more and, uh, and just see things differently. So I'm excited about introducing the adventures of Darren and Destiny.